Patients with atrial fibrillation have a higher risk of stroke, and that's why we treat the oral anticoagulation. But some patients don't do well with oral anticoagulants. They have bleeding episodes, et cetera. So um, one of the approaches is to look at appendage closure devices. But we studied a novel approach, completely novel. And the idea is to put a permanent carotid filter in both of the carotid arteries. So the, the way the device works is you have a needle, a 25 gauge needle, which is very, very thin. And under direct ultrasound guidance, we puncture into the carotid artery. And there's a motorized mechanism that, in, that expels the, the, the coil, which is made out of a night nose spline. And it basically just sits in the carotid. The way it works is blood flows right through it. It's not, not a problem. But if there's an embolus coming from whether it's the heart or anywhere else, and it's greater, or greater than 1.2 millimeters in diameter, it gets caught there. So the study that we did was, to, was actually a first in human study with this particular technology. In four centers in Europe, we looked at 25 patients who couldn't take oral anticoagulation because of bleeding episodes or other issues. And we basically implanted these carotid filters bilaterally. So the CAPTCHA trial was a prospective, non-randomized, first-in-human feasibility trial. We conducted this at four centers in Europe. Uh, a total of 25 patients were enrolled in the trial. And the goal, again, as in this feasibility trial, was to understand the safety of, put, of, being able, of putting in these carotid filters bilaterally, um, both acute safety as well as chronic safety, and to try to get some understanding of efficacy. Does it actually capture thrombi? If a thrombus is captured, what's the fate of it? What happens to it? So these are the questions that we were trying to answer. So the first thing that we found was that, yes, it is actually possible to put these carotid filters in safely. In all 25 patients, we, we had no major complications. In terms of success of implantation, uh, it was in 23 patients. In one patient, because of poor visibility, that we did not, uh, we were not able to put in the carotid filters. Another patient, we were able to put it on one side, but on the other side, there was more plaque than was observed during the initial screening ultrasound, so we decided not to proceed. But so 92% success in terms of implantation. That's the implantation success. Now, what about safety? Well, we had no major safety events in terms of putting in, some patients had some mild uh, bruising or uh, some edema, which was uh, self-limiting and didn't uh, prolong hospitalization. And the patients did well, both acutely as well as over follow-up. All the patients received ultrasound at one week, two week, one month, three month, et cetera. And uh, all of the carotids were patent, no evidence of any occlusion or thrombus or migration. And we also found in four patients during follow-up, all asymptomatic, there was actually thrombi that appeared to have been caught, actually emboli that appeared to have been caught. And we say, you know, how do you differentiate between emboli that were caught as opposed to embolus um, uh, uh, sort of forming on this? Well, based on preclinical work, the embolus that, gets, that forms on it looks different than the emboli that are caught. And so this was adjudicated, this was uh, emboli that were caught. Also, by giving these patients sub-Q heparin, the emboli have largely dissolved. Uh, five out of the six patients, it dissolved, and the last patient, it's in the process of dissolving. So overall, what, we've, what we believe is this is data that shows that, number one, it is feasible to put this in safely. Number two, we have some hint of efficacy. And in this, we consider this first in human trial a success. Obviously, still the first study of many to follow. So I think this trial shows that this can be done safely at least in the hands of a small number of operators. We need to understand, can you maintain the safety with a large number of operators? And we need to understand how effective this really is. And this is an example where a randomized trial is absolutely critical. It's actually interesting. There's different types of populations that could benefit. You could imagine patients who can't take any or anticoagulation using this as an alternative. Another option is patients who are getting or anticoagulation for AFib, but still remain at risk of stroke because of uh, because of they're just high-risk uh, patients, patients with a previous stroke or other many risk factors. And you could imagine this as an adjunct to oral anticoagulation. So in fact, a trial has just started that we're now sort of the follow-up feasibility, second feasibility trial, where we're looking at implanting this as a, again, an adjunct to oral anticoagulation. W once that trial completes, then the hope is to start a large randomized trial comparing this to control.